Hey y'all, it's Will, and today we'll be flying over New Hampshire, state number 29 on our list of 50 states to tour in Microsoft Flight Simulator. New Hampshire is home to 1.36 million people, making it the 41st most populated state in the Union. It also has a land area of 9,349 square miles, making it the 46th largest state in the Union. Um, it was granted statehood in 1788, making it the ninth state to be granted statehood one of the original 13 colonies, of course. Algonquin tribes inhabited the area prior to European settlement. Um, English and French explorers first visited uh, between 1600 and 1605, uh, and the first settlement was established in present-day Rye in 1623. Uh, New Hampshire was, of course, one of the original 13 colonies, um, and at the time of the Revolution, the coastal region's economy revolved around sawmills, shipping, and warehouses. Um, the only battle of the revolution to actually be held in New Hampshire was a raid on Fort William and Mary, uh, which occurred five months before the Battle of Lexington and Concord. Uh, so, I suppose technically the battle was before the Revolutionary War actually started, but we'll consider it part of the Revolutionary War. Um, certainly part of the build-up to it. Um, after the revolution, uh, industrialization in New Hampshire took the form of textile mills. Um, Around World War One, the textile industry began to collapse as uh, other energy sources became viable. Um, and then once other en energy sources became viable, other than just water power, um, companies were able to move textile mills way closer to the actual cotton fields in the south, uh, which made all of the textile mills in the north pretty much obsolete. Um, so that was a big bummer for the New Hampshire economy. Um, but for the most part, technology replaced the lost uh, textile industry. Um, New Hampshire today plays a substantial role in presidential politics, uh, along with Iowa being among the first presidential primaries. Uh, so voters in New Hampshire and Iowa get a uh, perhaps disproportionate amount of sway in ter over who gets to be the presidential nominee for each respective political party. We're currently flying over Manchester, which is the largest city in New Hampshire. Manchester is home to 113,000 people. The wider metropolitan area is home to 407,000 people. Uh, that makes it the 132nd largest metropolitan area in the United States. Uh, the first settlers arrived in Manchester in 1722. Um, they set up a dam and built a sawmill called Old, Hen Old Henry's Town. Um, between 1722 and 1810, the name changed a bunch of times before they decided to settle on Manchester. In 1807, a canal and lock system was opened, uh, which allowed for river travel between Manchester and Boston, uh, which, of course, uh, as you might imagine, uh, led to increased industrialization and population growth in the city. Um, because of the resulting industrial uh, boom, uh, the city was named Manchester. Um, it was named Manchester after Manchester, England, which, it's, which itself was a industrial powerhouse back overseas. Manchester wasn't incorporated as a city until 1846, um, and when it was incorporated as a city, at the time, it housed the world's largest cotton mill. Um, the one mill alone uh, was home to, I think, 700 looms. I forgot to write that part down. It's either 400 or 700 looms in one cotton mill, which is a absurd amount of looms. Um, the rapid growing of uh, milling the rapid growth of milling in the town uh, resulted in an influx of workers um, around the time of its incorporation. Uh, most of the immigrant workers were French-Canadian, and many of the present-day Manchester residents are descended from immigrants from that era. This is a uh, pretty picturesque uh, little side river here. This isn't the main river. But, you know, um, I've just kind of stumbled upon this, and I'm going to go explore it a little bit. The record high temperature ever recorded in Manchester was 103 degrees Fahrenheit. The average high is 58.7. Uh, the record low is negative 29, and the average low is 39.7. So, um, New England, of course, has a reputation for being, uh, being cold. 
Uh, but, you know, as far as the extreme temperatures go, it's more moderate than the Midwest. Um, and honestly, it's a more, more of a temperate climate than the upper Midwest. Um, if you, uh, if you hate the cold, it's better to live here than to live in, say, North Dakota or Minnesota. Uh, notable people from Manchester include Seth Meyers, uh, late night television host, um, Adam Sandler, um, the brothers that founded McDonald's, uh, Ryan Day, who is the Ohio State football coach, and Chip Kelly, who is the former coach of the Oregon Ducks, uh, San Francisco 49ers, and Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, some fun facts about Manchester. Um, Manche Manchester has been named the second most tax-friendly city in America behind Anchorage, Alaska, and is also has also been recognized as the number one small city in the East. Um, additionally, it is been recognized as the 13th best place to live in America, um, and all of these uh, all of these superlatives are given by just various magazines that publish in the United States. Uh, so with that, uh, that's Manchester. Let's go ahead and move on to our next destination. If you go just a little bit. Uh, north on I-93, you'll eventually find Concord, New Hampshire, home to 44,000 people. Uh, the wider metropolitan area is home to 152,000 people. The area was first settled by Europeans in 1659 and was resettled in the 1720s and 1730s. Um, the city was incorporated as the city of Rumford in 1734. Um, in 1765, there is a mis municipal border dispute between Rumford and the neighboring town of Bow. Um, the governor of New Hampshire was forced to intervene, and after the border dispute was settled, uh, the city of Rumford was renamed Concord uh, in honor of the new Concord, uh, which is a, seminal f a synonym for a harmony uh, between the two towns. Uh, Concord's early uh, prominence, uh, combined with its uh, central location within the state, made it an ideal state capital. Uh, the state capital building was constructed in or it was made the state capital in 1808, and the state house was completed in 1819. Uh, and the state house from 1819 is still in use today, making it the oldest active uh, state capital building in the United States. Um, Concord was notable for producing furniture and granite through the 1800s. Um, Concord also became a railroad hub around that time, allowing the city to grow. Nowadays, Concord's economy uh, relies upon government, healthcare, and insurance. Um, this is another one of the uh, smaller state capitals. Um, we were in uh, we were in uh, Carson City last episode, and they were named. Their nickname was the small state capital in the United States, or something like that. I don't remember the exact phrasing of it. Um, but I believe uh, Concord is actually smaller. Let me do a fact check on that real quick. Concord is 44,000 people, and Carson City has 56,000. Um, so in fact, Concord is smaller than the self-proclaimed small state capital in the United States, as are several other state capitals, like uh, Lexington, Kentucky, for example. Uh, notable people from Concord, New Hampshire, include Franklin Pierce, the 14th President of the United States, and Krista McAuliffe, uh, the teacher aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger that, of course, uh, passed away um, when the Space Shuttle Challenger had its malfunctions. Um, while, we're, while we circle around Concord, uh, I will say that I've been to New Hampshire once in my life. Uh, I took a road trip up here to go hike up or not hike up, but go visit Mount Washington. We ended up taking the Cog Railway up the top. Um, and it's it's a nice little state, you know. Um, uh, like, like a lot of the states we've uh, been through lately, there's a very distinct population clusters. Um, Nebraska, all the population is pretty much concentrated along the east side of the state. Nevada has most of its population in Las Vegas and or Carson City. Um, and New Hampshire has a lot of its population right along the southern uh, border of the state near Massachusetts. Um, and as you go further up, uh, you really, uh, population really thins out. Let's so fly over Concord one more time. Um, I've heard people pronounce it as Concord. Um, I pronounce it as Concord. 
Um, subtle difference there, but I'm sure uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sure it's annoying people. Uh, so my apologies if I am pronouncing it wrong. Um, I don't do it intentionally, but also um, deal with it <laughs> is basically my point. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, state capital of New Hampshire. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to Mount Washington. Why not? Mount Washington is directly below us. It stands at 6,288 feet, making it the most geographically prominent um, peak east of the Mississippi. Um, for more information about prominence of mountains, uh, go check out the Alaska video in the series. And or, I believe we talk about it in the Hawaii video too, uh, when we're flying around Denali and Mauna Kea, uh, respectively. Uh, we won't go over prominence again um, this video, but suffice to say that this is the most prominent peak uh, east of Mississippi. Uh, Mount Washington's uh, super cool. Uh, I believe this is the Cog Railway um, we're flying over right now. Um, they have they have a little cog railway. That actually, might just be a road. Um, they have a cog railway though that goes up the side of the mountain, um, and it's actually recognized as a American Society of Engineers uh, historic engineering landmark um, because it's super unique. Um, again, I think we just flew over the road that goes up the side. It's hard to hard to tell really. I don't know if uh, the simulation would accurately render a railway as being a railway versus a road necessarily. Um, but Mount Washington's super cool. Um, it's the uh, or it's the location of the highest recorded wind speed um, that wasn't associated with either a uh, a tornado or a hurricane. Um, 231 mile per hour wind gust was recorded at the top of the mountain one time. Okay, wait, so this is the uh, base camp here and then this is the railway here that you'd go up. Mount Washington is also a uh, hiking destination. Uh, if you don't want to take the easy way up, you can uh, hike up the side. Um, I almost went hiking up here a few months ago and then decided not to because uh, I realized I don't like hiking. But down this way, I believe that's a road that you can take up. But, you know, also you have hiking trails along the side of the mountain, I believe. There's a couple different approaches you can take up, uh, up Mount Washington. Um, and then you have a... Uh, you have a little base camp at the top, weather, or it's not really a base camp, but it's like weather observatory, and then they have like touristy stuff up there too. Like, I'm pretty sure they have a gift shop. Um, this is my kind of mountain though, because they have a train that goes right up the side of it. Um, you don't need to do any of the hard work to get to the top to see the view. I remember, uh, I came up here in August. Here's the, uh, weather observatory, and, uh, other touristy stuff plays right here. Um, I remember coming up here in August and, you know, uh, at, at ground level down here in the basin, the temperature is like 80 degrees or something. And at the top, it was like 50 degrees and super windy. So, you know, definitely you'd feel the temperature difference between the top and the bottom, uh, which is super neat. But yeah, certainly uh, I... It's become a, a common trope of this series. I uh, always uh, always kind of rag on the Appalachian Mountains for being boring and uh, perhaps give undue praise to mountains west of Mississippi. Um, but Mount Washington is one of the better mountains in the East Coast, definitely. Actually, I'll go as far as to say as it's the best mountain in the Appalachians. Not only for the uh, railway, but also just because, you know, it looks cool, you know? Um, it actually has a peak that isn't covered by trees. It has a little um, stream action here. You don't always see that in mountains. Um, and you know, it has a, uh, you know, all the cool weather-related history at the top. So, Mount Washington certainly the best mountain in the East Coast. You know, let me just come out and say it. I've been told that on a clear day, you can see the uh, Atlantic Ocean from the top of Mount Washington. Um, Certainly, if we fly a little higher, we should be able to see the water. Let's pull up our map and figure out. Okay, so we're um, straighten out a little. Let's get ourselves pointing towards the ocean, at the very least. Should be point. Camera should be pointing towards the ocean right around now. So, I can't quite make out the ocean on the horizon. 
Um, but I can't make out water that way. Let's pull up our map again. Um, that might be Laconia area over there. If we... Yeah, so that's pro that water out on the horizon over there underneath the sun is probably Laconia, New Hampshire. Which we'll uh, visit at the end of our video. But before we do that, let's go visit Nashua. Alright, Nashua, New Hampshire is uh, the last of what I'd say what I'd call the big three cities in New Hampshire. The big three being Concord, Nashua, and Manchester. Um, if you live in Derry, uh, I'm sorry, but I kind of consider Derry part of the Manchester region. Um, but Nashua is home to 89,000 people, and technically Nashua is also in the Manchester metropolitan area, so I guess the metropolitan population is 407,000 people. Uh, Nashua is right along the southern border of New Hampshire. Um, if you go a few miles south, you'll be in Massachusetts. Um, this is the same river that flows through Nashua and Concord. It eventually flows into Lowell, Massachusetts, which we visited in our Massachusetts video. Um, and then eventually out to the Atlantic Ocean, um, which you could theoretically take to Boston. Um, eventually, uh, they made canals through Lowell that made a more direct shipping route to Boston. Um, those canals have since been uh, closed, though. Uh, Nashua was first settled in 1654 as a fur trading town and developed as a textile milling town in the, during the Industrial Revolution. During the 1840s, the two sides of a river actually separated into separate towns um, due to disputes between uh, the north and south side of the river. Um, they reconciled in 1853 and rejoined into one single town. Um, the mills in Nashville prospered up until around World War I, um, where water power was made obsolete by new forms of energy. Um, High-tech industry did eventually fill the void left by the textile industry in Nashua. And today, high-tech industry plays a large role in Nashua's local economy. Notable people from Nashua include Ralph Bear, who is the inventor of the home video game console. So if you play video games on Xbox or PS5 or, you know, whatever console you have, uh, you have Nashua, New Hampshire to thank for that, partially. We'll go ahead and uh, fly around a little bit. I noticed that the uh, Wikipedia articles from New Hampshire were uh, strangely light on history, um, certainly compared to other New England states. Uh, you know, you'd think uh, in New England they have an extra few hundred years of history to write about. Um, but for the most part, uh, I guess things are pretty quiet up here in New Hampshire. So, you know, not a huge, huge uh, history section for any of these uh, cities we've gone over so far, really. Um, but, you know, I'm just looking around here, you can see pretty wide urban area. I'm kind of following the river. Um, if we go up too far north... Actually, we can probably see Manchester up the river a little bit. We're going to turn back, though, and instead go along what looks to be this uh, highway corridor up ahead. Let me pull up my map here. Nashville is actually not on the I-93 corridor. It's uh, along U.S. Route 3 instead. And then this road up here is probably the 101A. Oh, I'm just kind of kind of guessing right here. I have, I have my uh, iPhone pulled up. Yes, yeah, so this would be Nashua Airport, so this would be for 101A going that way. Going out towards uh, East Milford area. Then going back into downtown Nashua area. Really get that bird's eye view from up here. Um, and actually, you know, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, New Hampshire just got uh, two to three feet of snow. I don't know how much they actually got, but you know, let's uh, go ahead and bump the snow depth up uh, centimeters. Let's go ahead and bump it up to 100 centimeters of snow. Um, that's a full meter. That's about two feet, three feet. That's probably probably a little overkill, but you know, this is uh, this is what New Hampshire kind of looks like right now. Um, recording this on September or er, December 17th. So, you know, just a big nor'easter just blew through uh, the area. So, you know, if you're thinking about moving to New Hampshire, um, this is the kind of scenery you get to deal with for a few months of the year. 
So, you know, if you don't like the cold, perhaps reconsider. <laughs> I'm only playing. Actually, I'm curious. Um, if we turn on live weather... Oh, um... I guess we'll get... Hmm. Alright, wait, that's live time. I'm curious if... We, oh, there's the live weather. And then... Adjust the time... To daytime. Okay, so if we get live weather, we get clouds. But I wonder... We don't get snow depth. It doesn't look like... Okay. Yeah, I was always curious if uh, the live weather would generate snow on the ground. If there's snow on the ground in real life. Um, but maybe not. And messing with the weather, all that, is going to uh, lag your game a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, next destination. Okay, so this is uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, right across the river there is Maine. And this is actually a pretty last minute decision to include Portsmouth. And because of that, I don't have any um, any uh, research prepared on things to discuss. Um, so Portsmouth is home to probably, if I was guessing, probably around 20,000 people. Uh, maybe a little, little less than that. But of course, it's just pure speculation. Um, probably first settled in the early 1600s. Or first discovered in the early 1600s. Probably incorporated as a town in the late 1700s. If I had to guess, they were a shipping town. But they were kind of overshadowed by Boston and Portland to the south and north, respectively. Um, but despite that, they kind of developed into their small little town here. Um, again, that's all speculation, but, you know, just inferencing from uh, the history of cities around here. That's probably the gist of what happened. Um, the real reason I came to Portsmouth is because the water makes it look kind of interesting from above. Um, I used to be a pretty avid City Skylines player. Um, not so much anymore. I don't have as much free time. Uh, but I used to play City Skylines a lot, and I remember one of the cities I made um, was on a map from the Steam Workshop that was actually a uh, the Portsmouth, New Hampshire uh, landscape. And you know, it, it has a uh, has a pretty interesting landscape to uh, build a city on, um, with the uh, of course the little river delta here, and then the way the water just kind of shapes around here and kind of surrounds this little stretch of land on three sides. Um, you know, if you uh, if you ignore the surrounding region, um, this is kind of a uh, interesting spot to build a large city on um, it, geographically. Of course, since Boston grew to the south and Portland grew to the north, uh, there wasn't really a uh, a need for a large city to be placed here. So naturally, um, Portsmouth didn't really quite grow as large. But, you know, very cool. Uh, very co cool little area here. And let's go ahead and move on to our next destination. Laconia. Laconia, New Hampshire, is home to 16,581 people, making it not one of the largest cities in New Hampshire. Um, however, we're flying over it because of the interesting water formations around it. And the interesting landscape, kind of similar to uh, why we just impossibly flew over Portsmouth. Uh, Laconia was first visited by Europeans in 1652, and a fort was built in the area in 1746. Um, hostilities between the English, French, and Native Americans prevented settlement until 1761, at which point lumber mills and taverns were quickly established. Um, a courthouse was built in 1822 and is still standing today, and it is on the Register of National Historic Sites. Um, the city produced textiles, lumber, shoes, and rail cars back in the day. And then this is uh, downtown Laconia, over here. A uh, nice little small town, a uh, lot of water around here. Um, certainly gets pretty, oh, I don't know about certainly, because that is a water, lot of water, I guess, but, you know, presumably gets kind of icy in the winter at times, so you can probably do some ice fishing up here, or, you know, um, whatever activities you can do on an iced-over lake in the winter. Uh, in the summer, you can 
probably do other fun water things like boating, um, jet skiing, whatever, what have you around here. You know, uh, certainly, uh, you have mountains out in the distance. Uh, you're not too far away from the uh, Mount Washington area, and certainly there's other mountains around too, so you can do a lot of hiking. So if you're the outdoorsy type, well, but you also want to stay in New England, uh, some place like Laconia might be the ideal place for you to end up living. Let's go ahead and fly nice and low over here. Just a cozy little town out here. And again, this is a uh, pretty cool landscape, um, you know, with the mountains and water, but also flat land middle to build on. Um, this would be like my ideal city skylines map, you know. Okay, we are now flying over the Dairy and London Dairy uh, general city region of New Hampshire. Um, this is our final stop of the video. Um, once again, I don't have anything uh, prepared to speak about Derry or London Derry, but I didn't feel right uh, leaving them out because uh, they are the uh, collectively the fourth largest uh, uh, settlement of people in the state. Um, that metropolitan area up there by that uh, weird shaped lake is Manchester. Um, and then down here we have... Uh, in this lake again um, Beaver Lake and Beaver Lake is where Derry is and then London Derry is kind of a little bit that way um, across the highway I think um, so I think there's something like 40,000 people that live um, in these these two town areas again part of the Manchester metropolitan region but you know we'll fly around and as we do that we'll uh, conclude this episode Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed, um, go ahead and leave a comment. Um, I read all the comments. Uh, leave a comment for one of three reasons, though, uh, particularly. One, if I've gotten anything factually wrong in this episode. Um, I surely uh, missed some things in the Portsmouth portion of the video. Um, because I literally made everything up on the spot. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, so if I... Certainly, if I got anything wrong there or any other portion of the video, definitely let me know. Um, two, if you have, if I missed any place in New Hampshire that you'd like me to come back and revisit, I will certainly consider that for a future video. And three, if uh, um, if you have any ideas for future videos, definitely leave a comment and let me know. I have a pretty comprehensive list of all the places I plan on visiting um, for the remaining states in the Union. Um, but, you know, I certainly know more about some states than other states. So, if you live in, say, um, New Mexico, uh, that's coming up in a few episodes. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, to put it frankly, I don't know very much about New Mexico, so I might overlook some things. Um, whereas the next episode is New Jersey, uh, which is actually my home state, so I, I'll know quite a bit about New Jersey. Um... New Jersey is actually going to be a really interesting episode, um, kind of because the state of New Jersey is a bit of a mess, uh, and also uh, I'm a little biased because I, I it's my home state. Um, so it has New Jersey has like nine million people crammed into a s area smaller than New Hampshire, I believe, or, or, or similar in size to New Hampshire at the very least. Um, it's the most densely populated state in New er, in the country. Um, and what the and also the uh, municipal borders are really small. You know, um, the largest city by land area in New Jersey is 69 square miles. Um, compare that to, uh, you know, Juneau, Alaska, for example, is 3,000 square miles, which is of course the other end of a spectrum. Uh, but you know, um, you know, especially once you get uh, out west of the Appalachians, you have cities that are much larger. Um, so you have a situation in New Jersey where you don't have a lot of uh, actually big cities. You, have, you just have this big urban sprawl of like 12 different cities that are each 40,000 people large. Um, and collectively they're one big urban area, but it's hard to get, it's hard to tell a compelling story about that urban area be, the way I do things. 
um, because I'd have to look up each individual city and collectively get their histories. Um, so I'm just kind of, uh, kind of still scratching my head about what I'm going to do there. Um, it might be a different, the, the feel of the episode might be a little different because of that. Um, we might have to, uh, rely more on my personal experience and a little less on, like, actual research. Uh, which, you know, uh, cer will certainly make for a different feel of an episode, and might not be the worst thing in the world, you know? Uh, it also might be a really long episode, just because I'll be supplementing uh, my own personal stories throughout the episode. Um, certainly it will go off track quite a bit of a lot of uh, non-sequiturs. Um, so, uh, New Jersey's episode might be disproportionately long, who knows. Um, I am from the southern portion of the state, um, down in Vineland. So there isn't really too much to talk about down there. Um, so I'm kind of I'm, so that also kind of worries me because uh, the vast majority of the population lives up north near New York City, and I'm worried that uh, I'll kind of gloss over the whole like uh, Newark conglomerate um, and spend way too long talking about Vineland, Millville, Glassboro, Camden, uh, and then Central Jersey moving up. Um, so you know, uh, editorially, uh, I'll certainly have some challenges making New Jersey video. Um, but, you know, it'll be exciting. Um, so brace yourselves for New Jersey, because I don't really know what to expect from that one. And you shouldn't know what to expect either. Um, but with that, thank you all so much for watching. Um, take care now, y'all.